I gotta pee, I gotta pee. <laughs> I gotta pee, I gotta pee. Actually, I don't have to pee. <laughs> I'm just making fun of that silly news anchor man yesterday. If you watched the news, you saw that there was an anchor man on television who didn't realize he was on and he started singing that he had to pee. <laughs> I thought it was funny, um, but clearly it was not very funny. I thought it was funny at the time. Anyhow, this is Coffee and Headlines. Welcome back. This is our daily get together live here on Facebook every morning, 1030 in the morning, where we examine headlines, comments, topics, ideas, questions, suggestions, anything that has to do with Puerto Vallarta, with Mexico, with our lifestyle, with our culture, with having a um, great time living here in Puerto Vallarta as a community of English-speaking locals. It's always a pleasure to get together with you. And particularly those of you that are <laughs> new to the broadcast, don't be frightened. We're not that silly. Well, yes, we are. But um, if you are new to the broadcast, just let us know by writing the word new in your comments. That way we'll give you a, a, a proper welcome. And who knows, maybe we'll even do a little dance. And if you have any important thing that you would like to discuss during the broadcast, it helps a great deal if you can add the letter Q to the beginning of your question or uh, your comment. <clears throat> so let us start, as always, to finding out who is in the house. And I can tell you ahead of time, today is going to be a very, very chatty coffee and headlines because the news, there's not that many new, there's not a lot of news. Um, but, um, but we'll have fun. Trust me. I have some goodies planned. And of course you planted an earworm in my head, uh, and you don't even know it. So I have to get rid of that earworm by sharing it back to you so that it can become your earworm and not mine. Let's see who's in the house. David, good morning. It's great to see you. Uh, Betsy Ann is here in Emiliano Zapata. Good for you. Um, Let's see. And thank you. Thank you, Betsy Ann, for saying that you are in Emiliano Zapata. Thank you for not saying that you are on Southside or in Zona Romantica. Those names are fake. They don't exist. They're horrible. They should be eliminated. So very happy to hear you mention the neighborhood by its proper name. Um, let's see. Uh, oh, Raymond, how are you feeling this morning? I hope you continue to convalesce and I hope you're feeling much better after your intervention or whatever it was. Um, let's see what else we have. Que onda, Alan? Happy Saturday back to you. Uh, let's see what else. Let's see what else. Uh, di -dun 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 -dun. Michal is around the corner in Versailles. Great to see you, dear friend. Um, <laughs> James says he's done the peace song before. I love it. Uh, oh, I am jealous in a good way. Um, there is a wonderful breakfast at Poblanos. Every time I go there, it's really a wonderful place. And there's sexy waiters. Oh, my God. Mm, mm, mm. One time I was there, and they told me, you can sit wherever you like. And I tried to sit on a waiter and... Um, 
Now that was bad. That was bad. Anyhow, let's see. Portland, that's a that's a long way. Great to see you. Let's see what else we have. Uh, <laughs> oh, Raymond, I can see that you're back. Your puns are back. You're in trouble. <laughs> oh, that is so funny. I love it. I love it. Uh, hi from Bobadilla. Of course, we know it's Bobadilla, not Bobadilla. But hi from Bobadilla, Chuck. It's great to see you. Uh, let's see what else. Is it proper to say Vallarta or do you prefer Puerto Vallarta? I get annoyed when PVR is used as that is the airport. Well, the name of the city is Puerto Vallarta, Joe. I personally, and this is just me, I always, if I type the name of the city where I live and I type it frequently, I always type the whole name because the name of the city is Puerto Vallarta. It's not Vallarta. Um, so that's just me. And be, because, you know, I'm, I, I'm a writer and I've been schooled by editors and really fabulous people that have taught me how to write properly. I choose to do that more often than not. Um, <clears throat> Michael just rolls his eyes at my comment about his restaurant. You know who I'm talking about, Michael, and <clears throat> he's pretty nice looking. Anyhow, um, let's see what else we have. We have... Um, um, Robin is from Alamo, Sonora, and you got your first shot, and Sonora is green. Yes, Sonora is green. We're going to talk about the states that are now in the green and whether Son uh, whether Nayarit went to the yellow or to the green or not. We're going to talk about nightlife in Nayarit. Um, we're going to talk about um, pot acceptance, and we're going to get rid of an earworm that you planted on my head. So we might as well get started with this. Here we go. Okay, so yesterday we announced that Nayarit had high hopes of switching over to the green uh, in Mexico's COVID stoplight. Unfortunately, it didn't quite get there. This week's update shows three states in the green Chiapas, Campeche, and Sonora. There are uh, 21 states in the yellow, including Jalisco and Nayarit, and the eight states that remain in the orange are Mexico City, State of Mexico, Morelos, Oaxaca, Puebla, Querétaro, Tabasco, and Yucatán. <clears throat> I had prepared a map to share with you, and I don't know what I did with it. Let me find this map so that I can show it to you. And there it is. See, here we can see all the entities in the entire map. Here we are. Most of the country is in the green and here is in the yellow. And here's the green that we have discussed, so the state of Sonora. And it is this area of Mexico which coincides for the most part with the most industrious part of the city, that of the country rather, that continues to be um, with higher numbers of cases and whatnot. Uh, yesterday, we also mentioned that Nayarit Governor Antonio Echevarria announced that all businesses could reopen. However, the State Secretary of Security and Citizen Protection, Benito Rodriguez, indicated that nightlife will not follow suit just yet in the state of Nayarit. In Nayarit, restaurants and bars will continue to open only until 10 p.m., with restaurant home delivery only until 11 p.m., all massive events and parties continue to be suspended and church services are still under discussion. Uh, Semana Santa, of course, is right around the corner coming up in two weeks. And I wonder if you have already stocked your pantry. I know that I have stocked mine or I've begun to stock it because I want to make sure that I can enjoy a nice time at home, just letting everybody else enjoy the city, the visitors and whatnot. Then it'll be a good time to give the apartment a good cleaning, or at least that's what we hope. Um, let's see. Then there's this business about, you know, the, the, the legal is legal of, le oh my God, legalization, legalizing that of, of, of COVID, of, of cannabis becoming legal. <laughs> Boof. Um, as Mexico approaches this, uh, there seems to be a shifting trend of, um, of more Mexicans being on board with it. A few years ago, Approval was around 37 to 38%. And in recent years, it increased to around 46 to 47%. And now 
There is a recent poll, poll, poll conducted by El Financiero or the financier, and this shows that approval has increased to 52%. 52% of Mexicans, according to this poll, uh, are on board with, um, with pot becoming legal. Of course, um, if you look at this image, you have to wonder whether Mexico realizes that it's not about touching the pot. It's actually about smoking the buds. So <laughs> um, we only can imagine what would happen if these very nice people who are just touching the pot would realize that it's not about that. You got to smoke it to really approve it. Um, but photo aside, the article that I'm going to reference this from also includes interesting graphs showing approval or lack of thereof based on age, based on gender, education, and other factors as well. Let me take a quick look at your comments just to see what is on your mind. Uh, -bum 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 -bum. Oh, how very sweet of you, Ed. Thank you very much for that. Spring cleaning, absolutely. Um, a lot of my Mexican nationals call it Vallarta. Yes, this is true. This is very true. A lot of people, vamos a Vallarta, let's go to Vallarta. But, you know, if we don't call things by what they are, um, then they become, they, 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 they get other names that are not the real names. Yesterday, when we were talking about gay pride, somebody cut and pasted a paragraph that, that talked about, in the first sentence, it mentioned Zona Romantica, Southside, Old Town, and the article was in English, and I just kept cringing because, I mean, those are not the names of the places. So we do, um, we do try to insist on that. And uh, only because it's a proper thing to do. Karen says, got to run. Fine, be that way. You're going to miss the best part because I'm going to make a fool of myself. But fine, be that way. Um, Logan wonders about about who is in the polls. Well, yeah, I know. I know if I were, was to run that poll, um, <clears throat> things would be very different. And speaking of Paul, uh, polls and speaking of cannabis, tomorrow is Sunday fun day. We're going to get a little crazy. That's all I'm going to say. But first, let us look at the weather. Where is the weather? Here is the weather. The home pod is dead. Long live the home pod. This has to do with Apple Computer, I'm sure, as they are canceling some products to make way for others. I don't know the details, but apparently that's what it is. But that's not what matters. Um, what matters is, uh, oh, I've seen your comments, Franco Grady. I'll come back to that because we can really have fun with this. Um, um, but 26 degrees feels like 26. Humidity is very low, 34 degrees. I mean, 34%. And for those of you who still speak Fahrenheit, it is 78 degrees out there. I'm feeling schwitzy myself. Um, the weather forecast for today is clear through the day. High temperature, 29 um, low temperature 17. Uh, tomorrow, Sunday, it's going to be clear through the day. High temperature 29, low temperature 17. Monday, it's going to be clear through the day. High temperature 29, low temperature 16. And there you go. Back to you, Frank O'Grady. Hello, Frank. It's not like they're calling it the Baja or Frisco or Cali. Well, yes, it is. It is just as obnoxious, actually. Um, because when people go to the Yucatan, they think they're going to a peninsula. They're actually going to a state. Um, you don't go to, oh, I want to travel to the Mississippi, or I want to travel to the Delaware. Um, I mean, I, let's have a field trip to the Massachusetts. You know, that's not the way it goes. And I'm sure that the people in San Francisco detest when people call their city Frisco. So, you know, is there such a thing? So, Cal... Sao Cal, oh God, oh God. And Raymond is from the OC. Oh, don't get me started. You guys are gonna give me editorial diarrhea with, us, with those notions, seriously. Um, let's see what else we have. Okay, so let me tell you about this earworm that you have inflicted on me and it started with Elaine and then somebody else brought it up yesterday so we are going to get rid of a little earworm. And it, we start with a question. What do the hitchhike, 
the locomotion, the mashed potato, the shimmy, uh, the twist, and the Watusi have in common. That's a no-brainer. We all know that these were popular dances from the 60s. The 60s was this very vibrant time in music when everybody was making dances, and there were television programs where people would do these dances, and, um, and they were very popular. That's what pop music was all about. Oh my God, we have to come back to this. Frisco is considered the height of vulgarity among Bay Area denizens. Well, let me tell you, Matthew, every time I hear Southside, every time I hear Old Town here in Puerto Vallarta, I get diarrhea. I really, really do. It really bothers me to no avail. Anyhow, back to the earworm, and I'll, I'll stop looking at your comments, I promise. I will not answer them anymore, uh, at least not until later. Anyhow, all these dances... All these dances were very popular in the 60s because in the 60s, that was the thing to do. You know, you would come up with a song, you would come up with a dance and so forth and so on. Take Locomotion, for example. Locomotion was a great song written by Carol King and Jerry Goffin, her husband at the time. They wanted it to be recorded by Dee Dee Sharp, who had a smash hit with um, Mashed Potato, Mashed Potato Time. But she did not want to sing the song. So the song went to, uh, to Eva Boyd, or Little Eva, uh, and Little Eva happened to be the babysitter for the Goffins. Uh, Carol King and Jerry Goffin had a babysitter. Sitter. It was Eva Boyd, and she happened to have a good voice, so they recorded the demo with her. And, um, and when Dee Dee Sharp turned down the song, it was Little Eva, or Eva Boyd, she didn't even, she was not even Little Eva until she recorded the song, and she turned it into a huge hit. But even then, that song, The Locomotion, didn't have a dance. So because record producers and television producers wanted to be able to squeeze as much income um, from a song, well, they had to have a dance. So little Eva had to come up with her own dance for the song. Now, all these dances have something in common because they are all written in four. In four, in four beats per bar. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And here's where we geek out a little bit into music. We're going to get a little bit music geeky and ear training geeky. So if you consider, um, if you consider locomotion, you know, it's a song in four. And one and two and three and four and one, two, three, four. One and two, three and four and one and two and three, four. So Songs in four are really, really easy to dance to because it's always the same beat, right? You know, you don't want to be dancing to a disco song and all of a sudden you have an odd beat that throws your dancing aside. So what has that got to do with anything? What has that got to do with my earworm? Well, that brings us to, yes, you guessed it, probably, I Say a Little Prayer. It was Elaine who mentioned this beautiful song composed by Burt Packard and Hal David. Um, and yesterday, as I was going through your comments, I saw that somebody remarked about the fact that as I Say a Little Prayer may have been a song related to the Vietnam War because a woman prays for her boyfriend soldier. Now, I cannot confirm or deny that, um, pretty much because I didn't have much time to get into it. But yesterday afternoon, I was just like, going crazy i couldn't stop singing i say a little prayer so what has i say a little prayer got to do with the dances well it was composed by burke backrack and hal david and um let's let's talk a little bit about the story the history of the song because it's actually quite lovely um before we get into the relationship uh, the song was um, released by Dionne Warwick in 1967 and it was done very reluctantly because uh, the recording session was in April um, in April of that year it was in April 9th and Dionne Warwick was a one take wonder meaning that you know, you'd have the band and the musicians and everybody would prepare and rehearse, et cetera, et cetera. And this would take hours and hours and hours. And when it came time to recording the lead vocals, Dion Warwick would just come in and she would, in one take, she'd just go in and sing the three-minute long song. And it's like, oh, it was fabulous. Boom, boom, boom. 
And that's, that's how some singers work. I mean, most of the big, big, big hits recorded by Karen Carpenter for the Carpenters, she would just walk in the studio, sing the song once, and then that's it. She was that talented, but not, not prayer, not prayer with Warwick, because it is well documented that Dionne Warwick had to sing the song 10 times and Bert Bacharach was still not happy <clears throat> with the song to the extent that the song went unreleased for over a year. It was not even re released until September of the following year. And it was only released because the, the president of the record company wanted it released. Um, so Bacharach never knew that it was going to become such a huge hit. Um, <clears throat> and it was. Now, you're probably wondering, well, how did Aretha get so well known with the song? Well, it turns out that the background vocalist, the background vocalist who worked on a recording session with Dionne Warwick uh, was a trio called the Sweet Inspirations. And it was led by Sissy Houston, who was um, Dionne Warwick's cousin and who was Whitney Houston's mom. So <clears throat> the girls would rehearse by singing the background vocals. I say a little prayer for you. You know, that kind of business. And, <clears throat> oh my God. Anyhow, they also worked with uh, with Aretha Franklin. And at some point, they, um, they were singing at Aretha's place. They were singing the background vocals. And Aretha thought, well, maybe I should sing that song and I should release it. So Aretha Franklin um, decided to sing the song. And she used the same background vocals in her version of the song. And it was released as a B-side, meaning that the big hit of the single uh, single 45 was going to be a different song. But And, and the B-side is a song that you kind of throw on the other side just for the hell of it. But, you know, we, we know what a huge hit this became for, for Aretha Franklin. It was huge. Now, what has this got to do with the dances? Well, it has to do with the dances, the fact that, you know, as many... As much as Burt Bacharach wrote so many popular songs, they were only so popular because he used to use a lot of odd meter in his songs. So there was not going to be, the songs were not going to be easy to dance. And this was a complaint that was made by a lot of people. You know, we love your music, we love your songs, but we cannot dance them. They are pop songs that cannot be danced. And to make a point, I'm going to totally geek out and channel the most amazing ear training teacher one could ever have, which I had. And her name is Roberta Radley. She continues to be the, the assistant chair of the ear training department at Berkeley College of Music. And, um, and she, she taught me everything about ear training and, and all kinds of heavenly things. And I just love her. So I'm going to channel my ear training teacher by showing you the score to I Say a Little Prayer. And I'm going to show you what I mean. And you're going to be totally bored, but I don't care. So this song is in 4-4s. Four and this is indicated by this little 4-4 four four here, which I'm sure you can barely read. So it starts with 4-4s. Four but even the introduction of the song, this is 4-4s. Four and then here, bam, there's a 2-4 bar, and then it goes back to 4-4. Four, four. And here's where the verse begins, the moment I wake up kind of thing. So the verse has the rhythm of 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 4. So that 1-2 that gets stuck in there in the middle somewhere, you know, you cannot really dance to because, you know, it's it makes for clumsy dancing, you know. And then, of course, the chorus, you know, the the, uh, the forever and ever, baby, de baby, you know, that has it starts here. It starts here and it is it starts in four, but then it goes to three and then it goes to four and then it four and then three. So the rhythm of the of the chorus is one, two, three, four, one, two, three, one, two, three, four, one, two, three, four, one, two, three. One, two, three. You can't dance to that shit, you know? You can't dance to that shit. And I hope this is clear to you. I hope you're not bored. There's still 118 of you here, thank goodness. But you're all very quiet. You're making me nervous. Anyhow, you know, if I was to solfege through this song, you know, the verse would start 
One, two, and three, and four. One, two, three, four. One, two, and three, and four. One, two, one, two, three, four. And one, and two, and three, and four. And one, two, three, four. So forth and so on. So, but then you get to the to the chorus, and that's where it gets really complicated because the, the forever and ever part it goes like and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and one and two and three and four and one and two and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two da 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 two three four one two three four one my darling believe me believe me and so forth and so on. oh my god i'm channeling my aretha for me there is no one and okay enough of that see that's that's what happens to me and if i don't do this i will never get the fracking song out of my mind anyhow um um that's the beauty and the craziness of burt backrack and hal david's songs well really burt backrack because he was the the composer of the music so a lot of his songs have all these odd meters to this date, to this date. And oh, promises, promises. Thank you, Matthew. Uh, yes. Oh, oh, my God. Yes, yes. Well, Matthew's geeking out with me because Matthew's a professional musician. Uh, but anyhow, um, I remember teachers that I had at Berkeley that, that taught pop music used to, you know, complain about Burt Bacharach, but I've always loved his music. And um, and I'm hoping that by making a fool of myself and performing this crazy solfege ritual, thank you, Roberta Radley. Thank you for teaching me how to do this. Um, you know, hopefully I'll stop singing this song. But anyhow, let me take a quick look at your comments uh, before we wrap things up. Uh, let's see. Let me go back to, okay. We've, we've read that. We've read that. We've read that. Very funny stuff. Yes, we've read that. I rarely hear Nuevo Vallarta anymore. It's always re re referenced as Nuevo. Oh, yes. Oh, let's go shopping at Nuevo. Ugh. Seriously. Um, <laughs> Frisco is vulgarity. Yes, absolutely. Uh, let's see. I can still do all those dance moves. Kristen, make a movie. Show it to us. We want to see it. The Corny Calling Show. Oh, my God. What a great movie. Hairspray. That was absolutely funny. Let's see what else. Remember American Bandstand? Absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, who knew? Little Eva, the babysitter for the Carol King. Absolutely. Yes, 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 yes. Um, let's see what else we have. Mary Black did a great cover of Say a Prayer. Yep, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, let's see what else. Joey is cooking and enjoying. I hope you're dancing. I hope you're dancing. Uh, See, shame on me. I just love talking about music and I just love getting people infected with it. It just gives me so much joy. And I'm so grateful that you indulge me as we do this. Uh, let's see. I think you went to Berkeley. Yes, I graduated from Berkeley. Music production and engineering was my major. Um, what else? What else? What else? Well, I think we're there. I think we're there. Uh, let me tell you that in other notes, I went back to that wonderful new taqueria a taco stand that I told you about. In fact, I went back last night. I'm drinking their Agua de Lima lime water, uh, which was so good, I asked for an, ex an extra glass to go. And I'm excited because Taco Tuesday now makes sense to me in my head, and it's going to be a lot of fun. And as I mentioned earlier, uh, or be a couple of days ago, we're going to have our first countdown to Taco Tuesday is coming this Tuesday. And then starting on the following week, we will start our one taqueria at a time conquest of Puerto or Vallarta or whatever you want to call it. I call it Puerto Vallarta. Um, let's see what else. I will make you a video of 60, 60 dance moves. What a fun idea. Kristen, I dare you. I dare you. And I'm sure the community dares you. We want to watch this video. We'll share it here. We'll do it on Sunday Funday. Just 
enjoy yourself doing it and we'll share it on Sunday fun day. Anyhow, what? South Boston? South Boston is now called Sobo? No. No, 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 no. What is it with these people? No, 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 no. Don't, don't, no, no. No, 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 no. You know, just go smoke something or just keep yourselves interested in other things. Don't go changing cities' names and neighborhood names. It's not sporty. Thank you so much for joining us today. It was largely improvised because there were not a lot of news, but I'm happy you were amused, at least the 105 of you that are still here. Tomorrow is Sunday fun day. Nothing is sacred. No one is spared. Um, cannabis has just been legalized. What can happen? What could possibly go wrong? Uh, and of course, we come back on Monday with our usual uh, assortment of news and all kinds of wonderful things. So I hope you have an awesome weekend. Um, I hear there's still spots available for Sunday brunch at Hotels Paul, shameless at Hotels Paul, at Paul's Hotel, shameless plug. And um, ba -boom, ba -boom, ba -boom. and I hope you have a great weekend. I know that I'm going to have a great weekend because I'm going to go walk and take photographs and prepare uh, Wednesday, uh, walking Wednesday and so forth and so on. So between now and the next time that we get together, stay happy, stay kind, stay dancing, stop changing street names and neighborhood names, start calling things by what they are. And I hope to see you again soon. Salud.